20 signs you have made the man you should marry. Point 17, 18, and 19 are very crucial, very important, and indispensable if any love must be adjudged true. Before that, welcome to Winning Secret TV. Here are the 20 signs that you have met the man you should marry. There are signs that God has provided us with to be able to design true love from fake ones. This is so important in determining who is suitable or whom we are compatible with when it comes to marriage. While it is true that love and marriage are not the same, but the two are positively colorated, without love, a good marriage is nearly impossible. But where there is true love, a successful and happy marriage becomes easy. This is because love is the bedrock of every happy and successful marriage or successful home. And therefore, if God has given us signs to know who truly loves us, it is as good as He has indicated whom we should marry. So the presence of true love between the two of you is a sign that you can make for each other or that you are suitable for marriage. When we are talking about marriage, you should understand that marriage is a union between a man and a woman. If you are new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other interesting videos just like this. Alright, the Bible makes it clear that God wants us to know things through signs and signals. Matthew 7, 16, KJV Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So today, we shall be looking at the 20 signs or signals of the new love. And by extension, what you are looking at for, you as a woman, or a man is a happy home or a happy marriage. Because from the Bible, we also know and understand that the purposes of marriage are for companionship, fellowship, love sharing, convenience, procreation, mutual complement, and mutual help or assistance. All of these things are impossible to achieve in the absence of genuine love. So love and marriage are always side by side for desiring hearts. When true love is absent, other purposes of marriage tend to malfunction. While stronger love is sometimes expected to develop over time in marriages, it must from the beginning exist before it can be developed. Because you can't develop what does not exist. Therefore, before getting into any relationship that may commit in marriage, you must be sure that true love exists between both of you so that you don't crash out or have to endure the relationship for the rest of your life. The scripture has given us criteria or signals for knowing the existence of true love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-8 Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous. It does not bribe. And it is not proud. Love is not rude. It is not selfish. And does not get upset with others. Love does not count up wrongs that have been done. Love takes no pleasure in evil but rejoices over the truth. Love patiently accepts all things. It always trusts, always hopes, and always endures. Love never ends. Now, this is what the scripture is saying here. Any love or lover that is not patient with you, is not kind with you, is jealous of you, that brags to you, is proud and full of self, is rude, is selfish, that gets upset with you, that count offenses for you, that rejoices in evil and at your fellow, that doesn't accept you as you are, that doesn't rejoice over your success, that doesn't trust you, that doesn't have hope for you, that doesn't tolerate you, and last but not the least, that is quick to treating you with action. Such a love or lover is fake and as such, you are not both suitable for a happy marriage. Praise the Lord. Now, this is the explanation of what the scripture is saying here. Point number one, that patience is always present in every true love. Any man who truly loves you is always patient with you. He rarely gets angry or offended in you. He doesn't keep record of your offenses or count the number of times that you have offended in the course of your relationship. Instead, he tries to avoid offenses and the things that brings offenses. He even tries to figure out how he can help you to avoid any offensive acts or behavior 
that will mar your relationship. And point number two, true love is always genuinely and keenly interested in the welfare of their partners. He is not only consigned of himself alone, he is also consigned of your own interests, your own welfare, your own feelings. And point number three, if he is the right man for you and he truly loves you and genuinely cares for you, he is humble towards you, he respects your wishes and your interests. He doesn't play with your emotions, wishes and the interests. He does not see you as an inferior or an appendage, but as a worthy and a dependable partner in progress and a worthy ally who he needed for his life to be complete. And point number four, if he is right for you and his love for you is true and genuine, he acts selflessly and sacrificially for you. He can sacrifice his time, his comfort, his convenience, etc. to satisfy your genuine yearning and for your uttermost good and the welfare. In fact, your satisfaction is also his satisfaction. And point number five, if he is the right man for you and he truly loves you, he is careful in his utterances so as not to hurt you or offend you. He chooses his words for you with a carefulness so as not to offend your sensibility. And point number six, if he is the right for you and he truly loves you, he forgives you easily. Every true and the genuine love forgives easily. He doesn't even seek for apology before forgiving, even though apology may be necessary at times once uh, an offense is established. But he doesn't seek for it. In fact, he forgives you even before any possible apology. And point number seven, if he truly loves you, he rejoices over your success and the happiness. And he is saddened at your failure and the sadness. He is always happy and elated when you are succeeding. He is highly delighted in seeing you exuding with the joy and the happiness. Hence the reason he tries to do anything to make you happy and joyful. Your joy is always his joy, your sorrow his sorrow, and he could do anything to pull you out of troubles or out of woods. And point number eight, if he is the right man for you and he truly loves you, he accepts you the way you are, he accepts your flaws, your imperfection, etc. And he doesn't exercise on your weaknesses or constantly critical of you. Instead, he seeks ways to help you overcome any of identifiable weakness or flaw. He does this without necessarily trying to change you, but he tries to adjust himself to improve you or to harmonize with you. And point number 10, he believes in you. He accepts whatever you tell him as being true and real. That is trust. He trusts you. And point number 11, if he is the right man for you and he loves you, he will always have or create time for you. He enjoys every moment or time spent with you. He is always eager to hear from you. He doesn't make excuses to deny you of his time and attention. And point number 12, if he is the right man for you and he truly loves you, he cares for you, he provides for your needs or comforts you. And point number 13, he remembers your important days and the times, for instance, he doesn't forget your birthday and the other days that are so important to you. And point number 14, if he loves you and he's the right man for you, he is honest with you, especially on things that he believes won't hurt or offend you. And the point number 15, he does not take advantage of you. For instance, he won't ask you for sex before the consummation of your marriage because it is believed and it is true that everything that is worthwhile is worth waiting for. And the point number 16, if he truly loves you, 
to the point of marriage. His love for you is the jealousy and the positively possessive. And the point number 17, if he is the right man for you and he truly loves you, you and he must share some resemblance or similarities. There must be areas where you and him sustain some resemblance. There must be area where you and him resembles. There must be area where you and him have some commonality. It could be of interest or in choices or in favorite or in behavior or in desire or in belief or in values or in preferences or even your looks. The Bible collaborated this in Amos chapter 3 verse 3. The Bible says, can two work together except there be an agreement. So if the two of you are meant for each other, there must be areas that the both of you agree has been made for each other. And point number 18 is tears at your face and they try to read meanings and your feelings while talking with you. Psychologists say that if a man is tears at your face while talking with you, he shows interest. So while talking with you, a person that truly loves you tend to look at your face for other meanings and there's some other understanding. And point number 19, if you gift, he buys you any article or item that appeals to him or that looks nice to him. As a matter of fact, there can be no true love without giving. There can be no genuine love without giving. There can never be any true and a genuine love without giving because giving is one of the languages of love. Even God loved and He gave. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, that God so loved the world and He gave His only begotten Son. Even though we know that it's not every giving that is uh, out of love or that shows love, but in every true love, there must be giving. There cannot be true love without giving. And point number 20 when He eats, when he drinks or when he does things that give him joy and the pleasure or satisfaction, he tends to remember you. He would wish that you were there with him to enjoy what he is enjoying together with you. In fact, in Luke chapter 12 verse 34, the Bible says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So if you really you are his treasure, his heart will always be where you are when he is enjoying. So any man that possesses this mentioned 20 emotions or qualities towards you, he shows that such a man truly and for sure loves you and that you can make a happy home and a happy marriage with him. However, we must understand, as we have said before in our previous videos, that every successful marriage is not only the function of love alone. Although we know that love is cardinal, crucial, indispensable for any sustainable success in marriage, but to sustain the love and to maintain the peace, the conviviality, and the companionship, which are the divine primary purposes of marriage, wisdom and the work must be applied. In fact, every successful marriage is a combination of both love and the work. For every sustainable, happy home, successful marriage, it is a combination of both love and the work. There must be incorporation of work and the understanding into any relationship, particularly marriage, if it is going to succeed. Because in everything that works, there is work. Everything that works, there is work that makes it work. Everything that works, there is work that makes it work. Including love, marriage, or any other relationship that you may think of. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for your grace and the privilege of sharing this truth. I pray, Father, for all my listeners and our viewers who desire happy homes in their marriages. Father, guide them so as not to make regrettable mistakes that will not accomplish your divine plan and the purposes for marriage, which includes love, joy, peace, 
companionship, procreation, conviviality, etc. This Lord, we pray you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for watching our video. We would like to give you another interesting video to enjoy next. But before then, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss other interesting videos just like this. Look at your screen now to see two videos and pick for you to enjoy. God bless you.